In this video, I will show you how to calculate the piston displacement. Let's have a closer look. Actually, calculating the piston displacement is a straightforward geometric procedure. It is the product of four factors, namely the piston area minus the rod area, when appropriate, the stroke, the number of strokes in a given time, and the cylinder diameter. There are four options which can be described by three equations. For a single acting cylinder compressing at the outer end of the cylinder, you can use the following equation. Here, PD is the piston displacement, ST is the stroke, N the speed of the compressor, and capital D is the cylinder diameter. For a double acting cylinder without a tail rod, you can use the following equation. Here, the small d is the piston rod diameter. And finally, for a double acting cylinder with a tail rod, you can use this last equation. Now, the concept of tail rod will be discussed in detail in the section covering the mechanical design of reciprocating compressors. For now, just remember that for an application requiring a single acting cylinder compressing on the frame and only, you can use the last equation that you can see here, but just remember to delete the two in the expression. A practical example will be provided to you further ahead in this section. To determine the actual inlet capacity of a cylinder, the calculated displacement must be modified. There are two reasons why modification is needed. The first is because of the clearance at the end of the piston travel. Earlier in this section, when the compression cycle was described, a portion of the pressure volume indicator diagram was referred to as the expansion portion of the cycle. The gas trapped in the clearance area expands and partially refills the cylinder, taking away some of the capacity. The following equation reflects the expansion effect on capacity and is referred to as the theoretical volumetric efficiency. Here, F is the ratio of discharge compressibility to inlet compressibility. RP is the pressure ratio, C is the percent clearance, and K is the isentropic exponent. The limit of the theoretical value can be demonstrated by substituting zero for the clearance C, which results in a volumetric efficiency multiplier of one. The second reason for modification of the displaced volume is that in real-world applications, the cylinder will not achieve the volumetric performance predicted by this equation. Therefore, it is modified to include empirical data. This new equation is the one recommended by the Compressed Air and Gas Institute, but it is somewhat arbitrary as there is no universal equation. Practically speaking, however, there is enough flexibility in the guidelines for the equation to produce reasonable results. The one in the previous theoretical equation is now replaced with 0.97, to reflect that even with zero clearance, the cylinder will not fill perfectly. The term L that you can see here is added at the end to allow for gas slippage past the piston rings in the various types of construction. If in the course of making an estimate a specific value is desired, you can use 0.03 for lubricated compressors and 0.07 for non-lubricated machines. These, of course, are approximations and the exact value may vary 
by as much as an additional 0.02 to 0.03. Now again, keep in mind, a practical example will be provided to you at the end of this section. Calculating the inlet capacity of a reciprocating compressor is a straightforward procedure. It is actually the product of two factors, namely the inlet volumetric efficiency and the piston displacement, as depicted here. Recall that there are four options which can be described by three equations to calculate the piston displacement single acting cylinder, double acting cylinder without a tail rod, double acting cylinder with a tail rod, and a single acting cylinder compressing on the frame and only. Another value to be determined is the piston speed. The average piston speed may be calculated by the following formula. Now, the basis for evaluation of piston speed varies throughout the industry. This actually indicates that the subject is spiced with as much emotion as technical basics. In this video, we will try to sort out the fundamentals. First, because there are so many configurations and forms of the reciprocating compressor that we're going to cover further ahead it would appear logical that there is no one piston speed limit that will apply across the board to all reciprocating compressors. The manufacturer is at odds with the user because he would like to keep the speed up to keep the size of the compressor down, while the user would like to keep the speed down for reliability purposes. As is true for so many other cases, Economics referee this issue. An obvious reason to limit the speed is maintenance expense. The lower the piston speed, the lower the maintenance, and the higher the reliability. The relationship given by the piston displacement, as seen in a previous video, which is reminded here, defines the size of the cylinder. Therefore, if the speed is reduced, to lower the piston speed, then the diameter of the cylinder must increase to compensate for the lost displacement in order to maintain the same capacity. As cylinder size goes up, so does the cost of the cylinder. So it is not difficult to see why the user and manufacturer are at something of a cross purpose. If the user's service requires a high degree of reliability and he wants to keep cylinder and piston ring wear down, he must be aware of the increasing cost. Now, to complicate even more the subject of piston speed, let's have a look at both equations, piston speed and piston displacement. Here, recall, ST refers to the piston stroke the piston speed can be controlled by a shorter stroke, but the diameter and the speed must be increased due to the loss of displacement. If only speed is increased, the whole exercise is academic, as the piston speed will be back up to the original value. If, however, diameter alone or both diameter and speed are increased, the net result can be a lower piston speed. Another factor comes to bear at this point concerning valve life, which decreases with the increase in the number of strokes and can negate the apparent gain in maintenance cost of lower piston speed. It would appear actually that the engineer trying to evaluate a compressor bid just can't win. The various points are not tendered here just to frustrate you, but rather are given to help you and to show you that this is another area that must have a complete evaluation. 
all facets of a problem must be considered before an intelligent evaluation can be made when dealing with reciprocating compressors. So, given all of these issues, it would seem very difficult to select a piston speed. For someone without previous experience on reciprocating compressor, the following guidelines can be used as a starting point. The values that we are going to show you here apply to the industrial process type of compressor with a double acting cylinder construction. For the first type concerning horizontal compressors with lubricated cylinders, you can use 700 feet per minute. For horizontal compressors with non-lubricated cylinders, a lower speed must be considered to keep the cylinder and the piston ring wear down. 600 feet per minute is an acceptable guideline. For vertical compressors with lubricated cylinders, you can use 800 feet per minute. And finally, for vertical compressors with non-lubricated cylinders, here again a lower speed must be considered. 700 feet per minute is an acceptable guideline. Another factor to consider is the compressor rotative speed relative to valve wear. Keep in mind, the lower the speed, the fewer the valve cycles, which contributes to longer valve life. We will get back to this in a later section, as the subject of valves is very critical for reciprocating compressors. We have actually built a dedicated section with in-depth technical details to cover this. The discharge temperature of a reciprocating compressor stage can be calculated using the following formula. Here, T1 is the absolute inlet temperature. T2 is the absolute discharge temperature. K is the ratio of specific heats. And Rp is the pressure ratio. Recall, a practical example will be provided to you at the end of this section to see how to manipulate the different equations governing the reciprocating compressor performance.